let us talk about Game of Thrones and Norse mythology. Undeniably, one of the major wells of thematic and symbolic elements in Game of Thrones is the myths and legends pulled from Norse mythology, beginning with Winter is Coming, Winter is coming. or Ragnarok and the Cyclical Time. On the very first episode, you heard the warning, Winter is coming. Winter is coming. It has become the catchphrase of Game of Thrones. From the very beginning, the White Walkers are growing in number and strength. On the other side of the war. Meanwhile, in the rest of the world, the living are embroiled in civil war, intricate and accelerating chaos, unaware of their imminent destruction. Now, the Vikings believed that their world would end in a tremendous battle between the gods and the ice giants, the forces of chaos. This epic lesson is called Ragnarok, and it will happen when a great wind overcomes the earth and the ice giants reach their barrier between their domain and the domain of the gods, which would be Asgard. This barrier is the Bifrost, rich in the legends, but the war and the series. And to fight against this horrible doom, Odin gathers the spirits of the bravest various of Valhalla. Even though these Vikings may have been enemies before, they will fight together against the Ice Giants at Ragnarok. Many, but not all, experts believe that the Norse region of time was cyclical. That means Ragnarok might be the final destruction of everything, but it also passed away for the rebirth of a new world and starting the entire story over again. In the Norse creation story, the world is a void between a field of ice and a river of fire. Sounds familiar? And life springs up from the interaction of these elements. Similarly, and particularly in the novels, Martin describes our geographical and political situation, much like Europe and Asia, at other points in history, but includes flora and fauna, such as a dire wolf from the late Pleistocene era, commonly called the Ice Age. That era, characterized by periods of freezing weather and glacial advances, ended 11,700 years ago, so long before recorded history began. Ned Stark saying, Winter is coming. As he stands under snow, it's referring to a longer, deeper period of winter, or a glacial period. Thus, Morton seems to be suggesting cyclical view of human history, and that a world much like what existed in the Middle Ages also existed 12 million years ago. Perhaps human history rose and fell several times. This is a similar idea to the Norse creation Ragnarok cycle. Now on to the White Walkers and Ice Giants, the precursor and herald of Ragnarok, the fights with civil war and humankind falling into betrayal and violence. Similarly, much of the story of Game of Thrones is the various competing human characters pitched against each other, but the real threat is preparing to destroy them all. In Game of Thrones, the White Walkers, or others as they are called in the novels, are cold, nearly indestructible creatures with frosty skin and eyes like, well, ice. They have many similar characteristics to the Ice Giants or Frost Giants of Norse lore. The Norse giants were more like anti-gods and towering tall with hogs of later European folklore, and they represented chaos and destruction. When the White Walkers kill, their victims come back as a white, basically a zombie. Those two may have Norse inspiration in that, at Ragnarok, the giants will be helped by the goddess of the underworld, Hel, and her hundred halls. In Norse myth, the gods often needed magic weapons, like for example, Orin's spear, Kungnir, or Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, to defeat the giants. But in Game of Thrones, the White Walkers are only susceptible to Valyrian steel or dragon glass, aka obsidian, onto the walls. They can have both positive and negative connotations in Norse myth. The great evil wolf, Fenrir, 
and his flag are one of the driving forces behind Ragnarok. But Odin himself created his two wolves, Geri and Freki, both names basically meaning Revenous or Greedy, who follow him into every battle. In history, select Viking champions would take on the spirit and hide of a wolf and were called the Ulfhethnar, very similar to the Viking warriors who were called Berserkers, which by the way stands for Beershirt or Deerskin. The Grist of the Stark family, the central family in the Game of Thrones series, is the Dire Wolf. Dire Wolf existed in our world during the late Pleistocene Ice Age and were bigger and deadlier than Grey Wolves. Like Odin, each of the Stark family has a Dire Wolf that accompanies him or her and acts similarly to the familiars or spiritual animals of Norse gods. Talking about spirit animals, the ravens may be the most associated animal with the Vikings. Like wolves, ravens are the familiars of Odin, the Alfather. Odin was a god of war, and ravens feasting on the slain were a common sight on the battlefields of the Viking Age. Odin was accompanied by two ravens, Hugin, which means thought, and Munin, which means memory. Hugin and Munin fly throughout the nine worlds, and over their far eye seas, they are whispering back to Odin. Odin is often called Rafnaguth, which means the raven god, and is often depicted with Hugin and Munin, either sitting on his shoulder or flying around him. In Game of Thrones, ravens are used as messengers by the elites of Vesteros, but the symbolism goes far deeper than that. Bran Stark is confronted in his dreams by the Three-Eyed Raven, an otherworldly messenger. When Bran finally meets, and eventually becomes, the Three-Eyed Raven, he finds that he is a very powerful green seer, who can see the past, present and future. This wizard appears in human form, his body fused to the roots of the Weirwood tree. By the way, the prefix Weir derives from the Old English Weird, or the Norse Wood, which refers to fate. And this imagery is very similar to Odin, who often takes the form of an old wizard, hanging from Yggdrasil, the world tree growing next to the well of Wood, to obtain the ability to perceive the secrets of runes. Another important creature are the dragons. In all smooth, dragons have both positive and negative connotations, sometimes even at the same time. These creatures were ubiquitous in Norse art, and of course, Vikings would carve their prowls of their beloved warships to resemble dragon hats. Dragons and serpents were associated with mythical heroes like Sigurd Fafnir Sven and the Anglo Saxon Beowulf, but also semi legendary figures like Ragnar Lothbrok. Sometimes, dragons represented cosmic forces like Nifhergir, who wraps around Yggdrasil's roots, or Jormungandr, who coils around the whole world. As a Norse myth, dragons in Game of Thrones are powerful forces that can either be applied to good or to evil. They serve Daenerys, who was reborn in fire when she had the dragon axe on the Thoros funeral pyre 